And that's what I want to talk to you about today is the heart, a mother's heart. A mother's heart. We have to look after our hearts. Ever since uh, Eve was called the mother of all the living, most women have a desire to have children. Some might still be in a denial. They won't necessarily know and accept that they have that inside of them. And many women, even if they don't want children, they end up not having children. They, have, they end up having pets and birds and plants and whoever else to look after. So, yeah, don't be in denial. The mother instinct has even come out in our teenage girls or the younger girls. We see them playing doll and wanting to hold a, pop, a doll like a baby and, you know, having wanting to aggressive cuddle Grogu or Gro maybe Groot, you know. So these things do come out in the mother instinct. And Jesus himself acknowledged the importance of mothers. Uh, is that, isn't that what you do in Mother's Day? On Mother's Day we come and we just want to honor the moms because so often the women who are moms who are taking care of children, they're so busy and frazzled and they serve so much. They give so much that's not necessarily acknowledged. So we have, to, we have this day that we can just say, moms, we acknowledge everything you do and we honor you and children can honor their moms. And Jesus did that with his own mother. Let's read about it in John 19, 25 to 27. It was while he was on the cross, he took out a moment to focus on his mom. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. So Jesus was on the brink of, of death. And even in the, the throes of the agony that he's been going through, he didn't forget Mary, who made this big sacrifice to be his mother because she accepted this calling, this divine calling that God came to her about. And, and, say, and she said, yes, Lord, I'm willing. I will cooperate with the plan you have for my life to raise this child that you want to put on this earth. And isn't that what motherhood is? And of course, as he was going to pass away, he thought about her future. Because in the culture of the day, women didn't have work, a job outside of home. They were mothers or they were sisters and they were in the family. So if it was not the father or the husband or the brother or the, the son had to take care of the mother because if a woman didn't have anyone, she was basically destitute. So in that last moment, he said, Mom, I honor you. Woman, I honor you for what you've done. And I give you a son in my place. And then John, the disciple, took her as his own mother and took care of her for the rest of her life. Isn't that just a beautiful also show of honor? Jesus even knows what a mom feels like. We might think, but he's, a, he's God and he's a he. But you, know, don't you forget, God made us humans in his likeness. So just as much as the father side is, is in God, the mother side is also there. And it's expressed in humanity through the woman and through us as women. And I love this verse in, in Luke 13, verse 34, because I think that gives us a glimpse that he understands. He's talking to Jerusalem, the Israelites, well, who used to be so stubborn and maybe reject him and turn their back on him. And he said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those who sent, those sent to you, how often have I longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were not willing. And we as women, we can understand that, as moms especially, we just want to gather our children uh, under our wings and take care of them and feed them and make sure they're warm. You know, put on your jacket in winter when mom is, more, when, when mom is cold and you know, wear your shoes, don't go out on the wet grass and stuff like that. That's what moms do. And the fact that Jesus could say that's what he feels like about Israel says that he knows what that feels like to want to just take care of the children because that's what we want to do. And in this case, I think they were a bit wayward. It was like, I don't listen to you anymore. I'm going to do my own thing. He says, but I still, I still want to put you under, <laughs> under my wings. And we know that. We always love our kids, no matter what they are busy doing. But many of us are walking around with a mother wound. Have you ever heard that term, mother wound? You might have heard about a father wound. And we know that's, that gets more attention because there are so many fatherless households, unfortunately, in South Africa and the world. So we know about, especially boys, young men growing up, and they, they have a, a wound because they didn't have a proper father. 
But we can also have a mother wound, a wound caused in our lives because our moms hurt us. You know, um, we don't often think of that. We think mothering comes naturally. And because we're women, of course we're perfect. Uh. <laughs> Not necessarily. So, what is a mother wound? It's the emotional scarring children acquire when their mother abuses them physically or verbally. And it includes neglect or rejection. Maybe the mom is there, but she doesn't really pay attention. And sometimes she neglects her kids a bit. She doesn't engage. Or she rejects them full out. I think the worst rejection a child experiences is when a child is given up for adoption. But sometimes the mom just is not in a position to keep that baby. But that's still a rejection that you could experience. And sometimes we have unmet expectations. We grow up and we, we want our moms to be a certain thing for us. And then they're not, because maybe they didn't know that was our expectation, or maybe they just can't, because of their own background and their own uh, hurts. They just couldn't be the mom to us that we needed them to be. So if you have been hurt by your mom, today might be a difficult day to celebrate, because how do you celebrate Mother's Day when you have these? I know memories about your mom growing up. So for us to be good mothers, we need to be healed from our own mother wound, any hurts we've received from our parents. And this is also not just daughters that can be hurt this way. Sons can also be hurt by their moms. Sometimes the mom is the abuser in the house, not necessarily the dad. You know, mothers aren't perfect simply because they're female, although we would have wished it was true. So today, first of all, I want us to look at the mother wound, and then after that I'm, that, I'm going to talk about moms feeling guilty, because that's also an issue we struggle with. So first of all, I want to talk to you about your mother, the mother figure you had growing up, whether it's your own biological mother or a, just an aunt or a stepmom who stepped in to be a mother figure in your, house, in your life. Maybe you grew up with an angry mom. Maybe you slapped you out of the blue for something you did wrong that you didn't even know you did wrong. Or she didn't discipline you. One day you'd get the hiding of your life and the next day you do the same thing and nothing happens. So what's not actually right or wrong? That can be very confusing. Maybe you felt you, never, you could never measure up because no matter what you did for your mom, it was never good enough. Whether you did schoolwork or chores or gave her a gift, there was always something wrong with it. It reminded me of uh, Despicable Me, the movie. Has anybody seen that movie? You know when Gru was little and he was growing up and then he comes all excited with his picture. Look, Mom, I draw a picture of a rocket. I'm going to the moon. And she says, meh. And then he comes, look, Mom, I, I, bought, I bought a little model out of macaroni of my rocket. I'm going to the moon. Meh. And then in the end he comes and he says, look, Mom, I, I built a prototype rocket um, out of my model. There goes the rocket. And she says, meh. Imagine you have a mom like that. No wonder the guy wanted to be a villain. <laughs> So uh, maybe you had a screaming mom. You know, was the decibel level high in the house? Uh, and now sometimes you as a parent find yourself screaming at your kids, even though you promised you'd never do that. Mm. Ever considered maybe that an, an overwhelmed mom screams? I'm just leaving it there. Uh, maybe you grew up with an addicted mom or an absent mom or a jealous mom. Sometimes moms are jealous of their own daughters because they are insecure in themselves and now there's another little beautiful female in the house and they're like competing for attention. It's sad when that happens, but it's possible. I want to tell you a little bit about my mother's story. And like I said earlier, I don't think I've as officially ever shared my mother's story. And no worry, it's not a horrible story. I actually have a, a wonderful mom, but she wasn't perfect. Just like I'm not perfect. I'm grateful towards my mother because I think that it's because of her faith in Jesus that I grew up with Jesus and that I'm now where I am. But the other half of it is, is because of him, because we are in it together. But my mom set the stage for me just falling in love with Jesus. And my mom has lovely qualities as a person and she's an artist and she imparted a lot into my life. But she had her own struggle, her own wound. And that also affected my life. So it starts with my grandmother. My grandmother um, had a deep impact on all five of her children. Four of them were girls. Um, she grew up in a poor Afrikaans family. They didn't have a lot of money, and especially because the dad was a bit 
all over the place and so there wasn't a consistent income so you know often people that grow up poor they want to be rich money is very important if you grew up poor you you get vows like i'm never going to be poor again in my life so she did end up marrying my grandfather who was quite well to do good businessman in his in his circle and also she grew up in a time when afrikaans was kind of like still inferior and english was very la di da sophisticated to be english so she always had this thing of she had to prove herself and she had to be the most important person, the most talented. She had to steal the show with her unique sense of style and everything. So this turned into a parenting style that couldn't celebrate the talents and the individuality of her children, of her daughter specifically. She always had to be the best. So her daughters couldn't be she couldn't affirm her daughters, and so they grew up with their own insecurities. I mean, my grandma, I remember how she could dominate any conversation. She always had to be the center of attention. We'd have lunch at, at the house with her signature apricot chicken stew that she made delicious. That's one good thing I have from my grandmother, that recipe. Um, and she would be just be chatting away and being funny and stealing the show. My poor grandpa sat there, just eating, nom nom. I hardly ever heard him speak. <laughs> That's just the way it was. And then when we grow up, when, when they grow, grew up and married and had their own families, of course came the grandchildren, where I now come in. And there was still this conflict and this hurt caused by my grandmother to my mother. And you can't really miss it, especially as you get older. You see the hurt your mom is experiencing from her mother. Um, and when I was born, I was actually named for my grandmother. Uh, and what should have been an honor bestowed on the grandparent, it was actually an insult because there could only be one Gerda in the family. So for years, but of course I didn't really notice because I was so used to it growing up, I wasn't called, she never called me by my name. I think only about when I was in my 20s or something, she actually would call me Gerda without a prefix. It was always granddaughter or Klein Gerda or something, it was, or a nickname. So, and even, even with that, my grandmother gave me unsolicited advice about my, my skin, my skin care, my weight, how to dress. So you get the picture. So while my mom was battling this, her own mother wound, of course, how was she now going to minister mothering to her own daughters? Because she didn't have an example of how to emotionally really be there for her daughters, even though she tried. And later on, I realized she did try. But you only get to that point where you understand this when you are older and almost when you have your own children. Then you realize, oh, she tried her best. But I remember there were times when I kind of felt she wasn't there for me emotionally the way I needed a mother. Or I had to step in and kind of mother her because she needed a mother to comfort her about her mother. Okay? I know it's a lot of mothers in that sentence. Um, so... What I want to say is this, that as long as we resent our moms for failing us, we are at risk of turning out just like them. And this is true for both sons and daughters of a mom who's maybe failed them. So the key to being healed from your mother wound is forgiveness. We need to forgive our moms for failing us, not just for their sake, but for our sake too. And let Mother's Day not be like a funeral. Because you know at a funeral everybody's perfect. The dead person is perfect. They didn't ever did anything wrong. And sometimes on Mother's Day we feel a bit like that. Moms are perfect. But meantime they're not. So forgive me for kind of dealing with that today. <laughs> Just bringing that to the light. And when we think of forgiveness, we normally think of the Lord's Prayer. So let's read what it says there in Matthew 6 verse 12. And then I'm going to drop to 14 and 15. And forgive us our debts, as we have also forgiven our debtors. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. That's kind of hectic, isn't it? Now, of course, this was before the cross, before Jesus died on the cross. Now we forgive differently. I'll explain it now. But this, it's still true that if we don't forgive we remain bound to that wrong that was committed to us because it, 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 keeps, it keeps it attached to us. And bitterness grows, resentment grows, and we hold a grudge. So we need to forgive so that we can be set free 
from that chachas that's sitting in our hearts. And so that we can have a relationship with this parent. Because many times they're still in our lives and we still want to honor them. We still want to have some kind of relationship. Especially if the wound wasn't so bad that they need to go to jail. Because sometimes they need to go to jail for what they do. Now, although, although we forgive not because of this threat of you better forgive or you won't be forgiven. Because gee, God will forgive us. Of course he'll forgive us. If Jesus bought forgiveness for us on the cross by his death and his blood, how why will he withhold it from us? based on our performance, because it's available to us based on His grace, and it's a gift. It's not because we perform to, to earn our forgiveness. We're not saying 10 prayers, and then we will be forgiven. We are being forgiven because of His blood. So now it says in Colossians 3.13, Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. So now we forgive because we know we are forgiven. When you've received the forgiveness of Jesus, and you're so overwhelmed by knowing, yo, I, was, I did so bad, I was so wrong, and yet I'm forgiven. The relief and the realization of that is so tremendous. How can we then withhold forgiveness from someone else? Then we say, okay, with the measure I've been forgiven, I forgive whoever. And in this case, I forgive my mom for disappointing me, for maybe not being there when I needed her, for neglecting me, for being absent, or for turning a blind eye when I was abused or molested or whatever the case may be, so that you can be free from that and your healing can start. And it may, may help to, start, to try and see things from your parents' perspective and get some understanding into what was going on in their lives while we were growing up. Because sometimes we usually just see things from our own perspective. She wasn't there for me. But maybe while she wasn't there for you, she was struggling with something big in her own life. Maybe she was married to a wife beater and she was just trying to navigate that. And then she also had you. And, or maybe she, like my mom, was so insecure in herself because her mom never affirmed her. How could she affirm me if she didn't receive affirmation herself? She was trying, but she was trying her best. And of course, when you're a mom yourself and you overwhelmed with three, to- three small children at home and just trying to manage, then you suddenly think, hey, wait a minute, maybe my mom was also just trying and she was overwhelmed. And then we sing, oh Lord, thank you, I can forgive her. I know she tried, she failed, but it's okay. I can forgive her so that I don't have to sit with this resentment and this broken relationship with her. So what I want to recommend is for us to be free from this wound and and from this bitterness and resentment we might might harbor against our moms is to pray, to go to the Lord and say, Lord, my mom hurt me. And not to try to sweep it under the carpet. My mom's perfect. But to acknowledge in God's presence, my God hurt me. My mom hurt me. She was imperfect. She wasn't there when I thought I needed her in the way I needed. She maybe didn't understand. Maybe she rejected me or neglected me. But then you say out loud, in the presence of God, in the power of His Holy Spirit, you say, but Lord, I'd release her from what she did to me. I choose, I make a conscious decision to forgive her. And you can even name the things in God's presence. I forgive her for this and for this and for this. And I release all the anger, all the resentment and the bitterness I have against her. I forgive her in Jesus' name. Let it go. You don't have to walk around with a mother wound and don't because remember mother wounds or father wounds then just perpetuate in your life and you you also then carry that hurt on to your children because that's the way you think it works and that's the way you're operating out of your own hurt. So let us be healed so that it stops with us and that that same hurt isn't repeated in the life of our child or children. Let's forgive our moms today and redeem Mother's Day. And see the good things that they were about our mom. Because I'm sure most of our moms, despite their failings, still imparted some good things in our lives that we can celebrate. And let's celebrate those. The next thing I want to talk about is moms feeling guilty. Uh, The other day I heard something and I was quite sad when I heard this. Uh, A young mother said that the first time she felt guilty as a mom was on the day she heard her baby's first cry after birth. 
And ever since that day, she's constantly been feeling guilty about something regarding her child. Maybe because she's busy, she works, she gets home late, she wasn't there, she didn't spend enough time with her child. She didn't do enough. Did she, did, does the child have everything they need? Have they had all the opportunities? Oh, I can't pay for all the opportunities for them to be who they need to be. I have to leave my child at crash. And it goes on and on for moms. And I think in this modern age, it's even worse than it was maybe 200 years ago. Because now, most women, I think 95% of women work as well as the husband. So you have your foot like in the home life and being a mom and you have your foot at work and you're like back and forth. It's like a tug of war sometimes in our hearts. That's just how life works at the moment. Many families cannot afford to be single income families anymore. The world's changed so much. Now what do we do when mothers feel guilty? We try to make up for it. We do this by trying harder, by doing more, by sacrificing. Maybe overlooking the misbehavior or being too strict because I wasn't strict enough last time, so this time I have to be very strict. You know, so we, we try and compensate for the guilt that we feel. We book extra lessons, we buy them stuff. Because we try to make up for our guilt. We want to feel better about our parenting style. Or we try to escape the guilt by dulling it with a, a substance or an experience that will make us feel good. I know chocolate is one of those. But you know how many mothers I've heard say, oh, I just need a glass of wine. Kind of like a joke. But it means that they're looking for that something that to just make them feel, oh, I can relax. I feel better. To dull it. Or to binge watch TV, something on TV. I won't be specific in this service. Okay. <laughs> but remember, guilt is a ba bad motivator for parenting. For moms as well as for dads. Because when we parent out of guilt, we're going to make decisions. Not necessarily based on principle. Not necessarily based on what is right or good. But just because we feel guilty. And that's why we need Jesus. Jesus is the one that can help us get rid of guilt. Whether we are moms or dads. Or for any other reason. And I want to help you as a mom. To get rid of the guilt you carry. That you maybe become so used to you don't even realize it's there. It's just like an underlying baseline in your life, and it shouldn't be like that. Guilt shouldn't be the baseline in our life. Joy should be, and peace in the Lord should be the baseline in our lives. So to get rid of guilt, to get rid of guilt, first of all, know that you are loved. God loves you. He's the one who made you, and he loves you. He thinks you're fantastic and wonderful and beautiful. Remember, God is the one who made humans to exist in family groups. So he set up this whole thing of there's a mom and a dad and children. Ultimately, parenting comes from him because he's our model parent. He's the only perfect parent that there is. And he loves you. Let's listen to this beautiful scripture in Isaiah 40 verse 11. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers lambs in his arm and carries in his arms and carries them close to his heart like a dad and then it says he gently leads those that have young who are the ones who have young the parents the moms and God gently leads you he's not harshly leading you as a parent he's gently leading you he knows what you're going through as a parent and he deals gently with you Isaiah 49 verse 15 also says, Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. It's possible that human parents can really fail us, but God will never fail, us, fail you. Where humans fail, he is faithful. And you have worth simply because he loves you. If you feel unworthy and worthless, just know that you are worth everything because God made you. So he wanted you. He wouldn't have made you if he didn't want you to exist. So you have worth just in that already. And then on top of that, you've got worth because he loved you so much. He sent Jesus to die on the cross to buy you back out of brokenness and out of sin. So you are precious to him. You are worth the sacrifice of Jesus. So always know that he loves you. Secondly, we get rid of guilt by knowing that we are forgiven. We spoke about forgiveness now, but it's difficult to forgive when we don't feel forgiven ourselves. 
So first of all, we need to come to God as a parent and maybe say, you are I feel I've done, I've made mistakes. I've did, done things wrong. I've responded wrong or I made the wrong decision about my child. I feel so guilty. Bring that to God and say, Lord, I need your forgiveness. And thank you, thank you that Jesus paid the price for this on the cross. For every single thing you think you've done wrong in life, he's paid the price, including your parenting actions or decisions. So you don't have to feel guilty. He took the punishment. Why are you punishing yourself? Because we do that. We like to punish ourselves, but we don't have to. We shouldn't. Talk to him about it and receive his forgiveness. Remember, in Ephesians 1 verse 7, it says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Go to him. Just leave your stuff there. Thank him for his forgiveness. Receive it. It's ours when we belong to Jesus because we have been bought by his blood. And then forgive yourself. Because we might say, okay, God for has forgiven me, but I, I'm still my own worst taskmaster. Forgive yourself. If God is forgiven, what's your, what gives you the right not to forgive yourself? But I know it's tricky. But the same prayer you prayed about your mom, you can pray and say, Lord, I forgive myself for this and this and this. And I let myself off the hook and I thank you that I can do that because of the blood of Jesus. We do that. And you know what? When it comes to forgiveness, because you've d done something wrong, sometimes it's good, it depends on what the situation is, to even apologize to your child. Tell them. Be honest. Own up. Say, I, that thing I did was wrong. I showed you a r bad example. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. You, I think we shy away from that because we think, oh, the children's not going to respect me. They're going to say, ha, 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 and have the upper hand over the... But in our experience, we found that it actually builds respect and trust in the relationship. Because children aren't stupid. They know when you've done wrong. And they, they know they've got this very um, strong sense of, of fair, what's fair and unfair. We all know them because the, from day two or three, it's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> if brother gets that, I have to get exactly the same. Otherwise, it's not fair. <laughs> so if we want them to take responsibility for their actions and sometimes fess up and apologize, we show them how. We are their example. And that I think they respect us more for that. I, I learned this from my husband. He modeled that in our family. And so far, it's really only been positive because on the one way, you restore the relationship. Because the, tri the child, if you did something wrong, they're going to look at you and they're not going to trust you. But when you say, that was a mistake, they're going to say, okay, they know it was a mistake. I knew. It's okay, daddy. It's okay, mom. We, we cool. We cool. And they're gonna, when, when they made the mistake, they, they're going to know how to do that, how to come and say, yes, I messed up. I'm sorry. It restores the relationship. And thirdly, dealing with guilt Know that help is available. You're not alone in this parenting thing. Let's look at James 1 verse 5. It says, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. And this is true for all things in life, but also especially for parenting. Because sometimes we're at our wit's end. We don't know how to respond. We don't know what to do, how to handle a specific situation. Maybe you've tried everything in terms of discipline and you feel nothing is working. You go, Lord, no. no. And then you ask him, what should I do? The Holy Spirit will speak in your heart. And he will speak to you through the scriptures. And he will send messages across your way, teachings, good teachings that will teach you biblical principles on what to do with your child. And he's always there for you. And he says he's not going to find fault with you. When you come to him and say, Lord, help. I don't know what to do in this situation. He's not going to say, yeah, man, you did this and this and this wrong. No, he's going to say, okay, let's do this. Roll up our sleeves. I'm going to give you the solution. I'm with you. And of course, we always pray for our children as well. Pastor Norman mentioned this before, is that moms are prayer warriors often. And it, that's good. While we're praying for wisdom for ourselves, we might as well just pray for that child, that the Lord will speak to them because they are their own individuals. The Holy Spirit can speak to them and walk a road with them and sh open their eyes. Yeah, we have a scripture, Pastor Norman, always prays over our children. It's in Isaiah somewhere, I think. All our children will be taught by the Lord. Because when our, where our teaching ends and where the child stops receiving from us, 
That's a huge comfort to pray. Lord, you are still teaching my children. And what I can't teach them, you teach them. And when they stop listening to me, I pray they're still listening to you. So all my children will be taught by the Lord. We are all still learning in any case from God. So know that help is available. Don't sit in your guilt. Receive wisdom, support, and intervention from God. Search the scriptures. Pray for the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Go to Him in prayer. And most of all, when it comes down to it, think, just think about how, how God in His grace relates to us. And that's the type of parent He is to us. He has love and grace for us. Let's extend that love and grace also to our children. Then we're following His example as our ultimate parent. So now before we end off, I just want to pray. I want to pray for all of you. Two prayers before we do our salvation appeal. The first one is I want to pray for tho- with those and lead you in a prayer that you can pray softly inwardly for those who want to forgive their moms and be healed from any mother wound they might feel they have. And you can apply this to your stepmom, your mom-in-law as well. And then for parents who want to f- be rid of guilt, to know that you are loved, that you're forgiven, and that help is available. So let's all close our eyes as I'm going to pray over you. Father God, I want to come and just lift up every single individual in this building to you right now. And where they might feel, yes, I've been hurt by my mom, and I am angry at her, or I'm bitter toward her, I resent her for whatever she did or didn't do when I was growing up. Lord, I'm going to pray this prayer out loud, and they can follow softly in their hearts and minds, and just agree if they wish to. Lord, we, we say, Lord, my mom hurt me. She was, maybe she wasn't there for me when I needed. She didn't understand when I needed understanding. I acknowledge that, in a sense, she ne- rejected me. She neglected me. But today, in your presence, Father God, I come and I release my mother in your hands. I choose to forgive her for, and you can mention here, if there's anything specific you feel you need, want to forgive your mom for. I release all anger, resentment, and bitterness I have in my heart against her. I let it go. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, that you minister healing to every heart where a mom or a dad let them down. Come in and just with your healing ointment of your spirit and your word, your truth of your love and acceptance. Come and fill that hole that was left by an imperfect parent, which we, let, we, left that, we leave that parent in your hands and we say, Lord, we forgive them. And we receive from you what they couldn't give us because you're the only one who can really fill that void. And Lord, now I want to come and pray for parents who are feeling guilty. They're feeling guilty because they feel they don't measure up. They don't do enough for their child. They did the wrong things. They made mistakes. They lost their temper when they thought they wouldn't. Father God, I pray for those parents that now they will bring whatever they're feeling guilty about and bring it to you. Lord, we bring our mistakes as parents to you, and we just say, Lord, We are imperfect. Forgive us. Thank you for taking the punishment in our place for even these errors. We come now and we receive your forgiveness. And we shake off guilt, Lord. Thank you that as a parent I am righteous in Christ before your throne. And now while our eyes are closed, I want to throw out the invitation to you as an individual that Maybe you've heard a lot about parenting today, but you don't have a personal relationship yet with your heavenly Father, Jesus, and Jesus Christ. So I want to throw out this invitation that if you want to really surrender your life and receive God as your heavenly Father, the ultimate parent, to pray this prayer with us. Because to receive that is simple. You simply have to acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God that he came to take your sin away and then invite him into your life. We do that through a simple prayer. I'm going to lead us out loud in this prayer, all of us together, so that if you're doing this for the first time, you're not put on the spot. So let's all of us pray this out loud so that we can just give our lives and invite Jesus into our hearts. Father God, I realize I cannot save myself. I cannot fix my life. But you can. I believe that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, 
to die on the cross in my place. He took all the punishment in my place so that I can be forgiven. He rose to life so that I can have a relationship with you, my Heavenly Father. Lord Jesus, please come into my life and wash me clean. Be my Savior and my Lord. Thank you, Father, that because of Jesus, you do not condemn me. You love me. In Jesus' name, I am now a child of God. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer today for the very first time, we'd like to encourage you to just grab one of these booklets at the welcome desk on your way out. It explains what you, the decision you've made, this relationship you've entered, and just the next steps for growing in God and being with Him. But while we're in this beautiful atmosphere of just knowing what Jesus has done for us, Pastor Norma's coming to lead us in Holy Communion. The ushers will pass around the elements for you. When we speak about forgiveness, I don't think there's a better illustration or a way to practically celebrate it than the Holy Communion. Because it speaks of God's forgiveness of us. You know, I said in the first service that if we allow unforgiveness to harbor, it turns into, Paul said, the Apostle Paul said, into a root of bitterness. And the root of bitterness got so many other fruits that's unhealthy. But we can forgive because we've been forgiven. Isn't that amazing? Think about that. that you've been forgiven. This is what the communion celebrates. That Jesus took any and everything that you deserved upon himself. And gave you what he deserved. When we partake of the body, Jesus became naked, broken physically, hungry, thirsty, on a cross. So that you never have to become those things. The side of heaven. He wore a crown of thorns so that you can have the mind of Christ. Isn't those fawny thoughts, the unforgiving thoughts, the thoughts that plague us so many times? When you talk about parent wounds, in those unguarded moments, when you least expect it in the middle of a business meeting, something reminds you like, "Mm, that happened to me, or this happened to me. Jesus took that upon himself. His body was broken so that yours can be whole. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for your broken body. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That you who knew no sin became sin so that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That as Isaiah said, the chastisement for our peace was upon him. And through his stripes, We are healed. 
wholeness belongs to you. Health belongs to you. Because Jesus is your Passover lamb. If there's any ailment in your physical body, no matter how big or small, mention that to him right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Will you say with me, I believe it. I receive it. Let's partake of the bread. The same night he took the cup. And he says, in this is the new covenant ratified. As often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. So we thank you, Lord Jesus, for the forgiveness of sins. This blood speaks of paternity. So no matter how failed you feel by your earthly parents, God says, let me be your father. Let me teach you. Let me make up for everything that you feel you might have lost. And in there, he says, through this blood, you are a king and a priest unto your heavenly father. So no, not only are you not orphaned, not only do you have God as your father, he says you are a king and a priest through the blood. Your standing with God changed irrevocably because of the blood. Isn't that good news, family? We thank you, Lord, for your precious blood. Will you say with me, I believe it, I receive it. Let's partake. For a moment, just turn your palms towards heaven, won't you? Lord, we receive the gentle rain of your presence, of your forgiveness, of your kindness, of your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for who you are and what you've done. We thank you, Lord, that through your Holy Spirit, you bring healing and wholeness to everyone under the sound of my voice. We thank you, Lord. You are good. You are kind. You are for us. You're not against us. And I thank you, Lord, that the good work which you've started today you will bring to completion in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Awesome. I'm going to ask the man, the myth, the legend, Pastor Kay, Pastor Kubis, just to come and take up the offering. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Norman. Thank you, Pastor Gerda, for a wonderful message. As I said in the first service, you know, it brought back some wonderful memories of my own mom and my mother-in-law and um, and I just want to encourage you if you still got your mom alive or your wife honor them today because they are precious amen well it's my opportunity or my privilege this morning just to receive the offering and I'm going to read from uh, Malachi chapter 3 from verse 8 I'm sure all of you do know this, this scripture. It says, Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, In what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring in all the tithes into my storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and prove me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. So that he will not destroy the fruit of the, your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field. Says the Lord of hosts, and all the nations will call you blessed. For you will be a delight in the land of the Lord. Now the question gets asked here. It says, will you rob God? And of course, all of us say, well, we'll never rob God. 
And I want to encourage you today. God says, don't rob me. And if, if we do what God expects us to do, it says here that there will be food in my house. And God will rebuke the devourer for us so that our crops and everything that we get will always be there. And it says there that I will open up the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing that you will not be able to contain it. Now let me ask you this question. Who of you are experiencing a blessing that you cannot contain it? Okay? Now I'm not saying that we are cursed or anything like that, but we need to get to that place where God is blessing us in such a way that we cannot contain it. I would like to end with the story of just to better illustrate this passage of scripture and that is there was a, a rich man traveling in the country and as he was walking he came across a beggar begging for money and begging for food and this man had compassion on him and he said you know what I've got a bag of money here 10 coins I'm going to give you nine coins but I'll keep one back and of course the beggar was very grateful they departed gone their ways so as he was traveling on all of a sudden the beggar came back overpowered him hit him over the head and took the last coin so you think to yourself but what's such an ungrateful person he gave him nine coins why why did he want to come back and take the other one and that is sometimes what we do. God gives us everything and God says, just give me one back so that there may be food in my house. And that's the promise that God gives us. It says, if you give me one back, I'll make sure that there's food in your house and that you will never go without. Let us pray. Father God, we just want to thank you for this opportunity today, Father, that we can bring our tithes and offering to you and bless you, Lord. That we can honor you through that, Father. We want to thank you, Lord, that you will continue to supply our needs. Thank you, Lord, that you will open doors for us. Thank you, Lord, that whatever we put our hands to will be prospering and will be blessed. Thank you, Lord, for supplying all our needs. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So while they're busy taking up the offering, um, what did you remind me of in the first service? When I oh, okay. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There's cake. So <laughs> don't leave without eating. And then, guys, remember, Wednesday evening, this coming Wednesday, we have our first Holy Spirit Fire midweek service with evangelist Freddie von Rensburg. And we're really looking forward to that. Um, Freddie really flows in the gifts. He is strong prophetically and with the gifts of healing. So we are very excited for that service. Don't embarrass your pastor. Show up, please. Thank you. <laughs> okay. It's really going to be awesome. We're going to respect your time. We're not going to be long um, uh, because the focus is more on the worship side and the ministry side of it and maybe you know somebody somebody needs a breakthrough somebody needs healing somebody needs a touch from god bring them bring them you're going to wake up on wednesday and feel during the day ah i don't really need to be here don't listen to the devil listen to the holy spirit amen it's going to really be awesome i'm talking to myself okay <laughs> I don't want to go. You have to, Norman. You're the pastor. It's really going to be awesome. Amen. We're really looking forward to that. And then, um, you guys glad you came? Awesome. Just sit like this. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord makes His face to shine upon each and every one of you. Thank you, Lord, that as we go into this coming week, Lord, we go with a confident expectation of good. 
that you are for us, you're not against us. You are on our side. Lord, I pray that you keep us and our loved ones safe. You keep us safe from harm, safe from any accident or disease, safe from any virus or mutated virus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that, Lord, we will get preferential treatment wherever we go in this coming week because, Lord, we are your beloved children. If you believe it, say amen, somebody. Bless you guys as you go. Thank you.